Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Jim Brewer is our guest tonight. Jim, lean, lean up on the uh, microphone there, would you please? There we go. Jim, you know from uh, Saturday Night Live, uh, four years on Saturday Night Live, and uh, oh, movies, television, CDs... <laughs> He's done some guest conducting, I think. He's, uh, he's uh, quite the renaissance man. And before we get into Jim, let's talk about me. All right. How, how unusual. I want to give uh, everyone a guess. I'm gonna, three guesses. First of all, three, everyone listen to me. Three categories. I want you guys to guess what time I went to bed last night. No, no, uh, no dentistry. What time I went to bed. What time you got up. What time I got picked up. Uh-huh. And how many morning radio shows I did after I got picked up. May I try? Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Uh, sleep, 2.30. Went to bed at 2.30? Yes. No, 2 o'clock. Okay. All right. Uh, pick up, 3.15. That's, you, that's your right on with the okay. 3.15. Radio stations, 22. 20. Oh, see? Oh. See? I know what you went through. <laughs> I know, because I told you last <laughs> no, night 10 times. No, you did not. All right. 20 now, I know shows. I could tell what was coming for you. Oh. Yeah, I talked to your assistant. Okay. <laughs> Jim Brewer, everybody. <laughs> No, I knew it was coming from Oh, my they, they God. They don't make you sit down at 3 in the morning unless you're here to 20 stations. Oh. And uh, how was uh, Boomer and the Nudge? Oh. <laughs> Drop trowel. <laughs> Drop trowel. <laughs> I, I sat there and I thought, how long before somebody says drop trial? That's the only way I could get entertained. I thought I had a count. It was like 19 minutes before the first guy said drop trial. Blah, 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 blah. You must just die. Yeah, but that had nothing to do for the next four hours. Because it's no fun to say, when is the next time one of these morning show guys is going to yell out drop trial? But, uh, blah, blah, drop trial. All right, uh, Jim, Jim, let's talk about Jim Brewer, everybody. I've, uh, I've never met Jim Brewer in... Uh, <clears throat> I know every B slash C comedian in this business. I mean, I mean, now don't get me wrong. I'm, I, say, I'm not, I'm not saying, saying I'm, I'm a C, C, C type comedian myself. I mean, what I'm saying is, is I don't hang around with Robin Williams, but I've, I've met <laughs> all the Andy Dicks. Right. Do you know, do you know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Yeah. All the middle level stuff. The all, level. all the middle level guys. Well, they've all done crank yankers. They've done thing. crank yankers or somebody knows somebody. But Jim Brewer, I've, I've never come across. I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I don't know. We just never kind of... I think we crossed paths. Maybe we saw each other or something, but... Yeah, but uh, we never never made never a luck in an alleyway or well, a party or something like that. The night is, the night is young. The, uh, the CD the night is, young. is uh, coming out on September 24th, and it's uh, off of uh, your Comedy Central special last year. The, uh, that's the DVD. Oh, that's the DVD. Ooh, the ooh. CD is completely different. Oh, good. CDs get all the stuff I can't do on TV. Well, are we going to... Uh, I guess we'll hear something off that tonight? Uh, and we'll pff, snippets off that? Uh, sure. Yeah, all right. Whatever. Good times. Any appearances or anything? Ah, yes, yes. Oh, the tour. Yeah, the Lighten Up tour. That's uh, Los Angeles at the uh, House of Blues on the 25th and uh, October 4th in Anaheim at the House of Blues in uh, Vegas. Let me guess. House of Blues, no. October... Who would have yes, thought? October 5th. It's pretty good. Uh, I didn't. I didn't even know they did comedians at the House of Blues. Like once in a here. while, they will. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Why don't we we'll do our, our thing at House of Blues sometime in what, Vegas? What is our we, thing? We stand up and answer questions. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one wants us. That's oh. They, 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 have, they have cool people over there. <laughs> All right. So should we go to the phones? Yeah. Let's see who's rocking. All right. Let's talk to uh, Tasha, who's 27. Tasha. Hi. Uh, yeah. Um. Men have Viagra, and what is there out there for women? Because, I mean, I'm getting close to my, you know, supposed sexual peak, and I don't even feel like I'm, you know, wanting to. I'm not enjoying it, you know. All right, it's first of all, Viagra for men has nothing to do with sex drive. Okay. It merely causes their penis to get and stay hard. Okay. Period. Okay. Yeah, but that that can lead you. But it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it just, doesn't. No. Men you don't, have you, you don't ever have a boner remind you to beat off. <laughs> 
Like you're just sitting around and it's like the dog scratching at the door. Oh, okay, boy. Oh, yeah, what time is it? Oh, okay, boy. But here's Let's that Viagra. You can beat off, ejaculate, and you'll still have your boner. Ah. That's what Viagra does for you. All right. You see what I'm so we have to keep reminding you. <laughs> Can't do anything later. Do it again. But Tasha, ball did, you lose your, did you lose your sex drive? You used to have it. Now it's no longer? Um, well, you know, um, I, well, I have kids, and I've been in a relationship almost four years, and we had really rocky times, and we were going to break it off. All right. Well, that's where your sex drive has gone, is in the relationship well, problems. Yeah, and he stopped, like, drinking, and we're, you know, I decided, we'd, you know, um, we're going to try to make it work because he wanted to. You know, he, he stopped. Is he, is, he go, is he working a program right now? No, um, he's doing really good. He wasn't like, you know, every day. It's just like when he would, it was like, you know, he couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. And he would get to be a real jerk. Mm -hmm. I mean, not like abusive or anything like that, but he was just not a nice person. And then the next day he'd be like, I don't remember that, you know. And all right, all right. So she, I mean, it's not her libido, so no, she's not into this the guy. Relation, well, not the into it's just the relationship is, is oh, wow. having problems and it, it, it yeah, shuts you, you know, down. He, you know, he is a great guy, and, you know, I would like to get, like, the full feeling back, you know, because we do have two boys together. Well, then yeah. get some therapy, the two of you, get some couples. Well, we are going to counseling. All right, well, then bring up the sex drive issue and talk, negotiate and talk about what's going on in that part of your relationship and how you might find some more uh, meaningful it's, connection there. It's women, it's like they have to like you to have sex with you. <sighs> I know, it's, sho it's shocking. I know, I know Jim's, like, offended by it. <laughs> I, w I was saying, I think it was uh, last night, that guys would... I would rather have sex with someone I don't like. You know what I mean? A little payback time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a spite one. Yeah, you know, the, the you. vengeance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've done that many times. Yeah. I'll show Want you. that smile off your face. Yeah, yeah that kind of... Go to work tomorrow. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong Thinking with that one. You know what I mean? Like, uh... For men, yeah. I mean, for men, like... Like the spide humpers. Actually, there's some women that do that too. The ones that you know, like strippers and stuff would be into that. Oh really? Yeah. Sorry, but, uh, didn't tip you enough. But you're not going to hate one of those. <laughs> Take you down. I, I mean, l l what do you think the average guy? How do you think the average guy would answer this? Um, there's two women. They're equally attractive. He works with both of them. One of them is kind of a bitch who bosses him around. Mm -hmm. The other one is nice and friendly and congenial. And he gets to have sex one time oh. with one of them. <laughs> you're going with the bitch, right? Absolutely. Right. Hands down. Hands down. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I don't, I don't know if... I Wear mean, her little badge when you're done. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Wear her red badge. <laughs> she is the red one. I mean, what... I mean, <laughs> women... I mean, that's 95% of men, right? But I, but I don't think it's because of attraction. It's because guys always they sort of want to get away with things. You know what I mean? You don't feel uh, so bad. Well, whatever, it's sort of like that gazelle you can't catch, too. Whatever it is... Like she's we, out of your league. Yeah, we'd like to get the one that, uh, that we don't... I mean... Not if you have to work for it. Guys aren't interested in working for anything. Oh, uh, no, that's I've true. seen guys struggle to five, six in the morning for a week straight. You mean one trying particular, to... Oh, yeah. Depends on the girl, sure. Oh, yeah. No? Yeah. True, please. How I'm dare sorry, you? Though. How dare you insult our guest? <laughs> <laughs> Just you got all mad at me. He's like, whatever. Carrie? Smoking brew. Yeah? Hi. <laughs> You're 20. What's up? Yes, I have a question. Okay, birth control... It makes your eggs not release, right? Makes your eggs not what? Release. That's yeah. correct. That is right. Okay. So, therefore, would girls taking birth control, would they go through menopause later in life? No. Has no impact on that. No? None. Why not? Okay. Just doesn't. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Why? It doesn't affect it. Oh. Hey, turn your radio down. My radio? Sorry. My radio. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a fool, you <laughs> idiot. <laughs> I was Sorry, why, to how come, He's listening how come, to like us. How come, how, come, <laughs> how come we wouldn't go through menopause later in life? Because that's a genetically predetermined phenomenon, and that happens when it happens. Why Why does egg release have to do with menopause in your mind, Carrie? I have no idea. I was just discussing it with my coworkers, and we didn't know. It's not like you have only a certain number of eggs. Where do you guys you use them up? Where are you guys working? We're working at Employers Unity. Uh -huh. Aha. What, uh -huh. what is that? We process unemployment hearings. Oh, man, that's got to suck. Uh, it's not that bad. Well, who do you get coming through there? Unemployed people? Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Why, what is he supposed to say that? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. You may be dealing with attorneys or something no, like that. You, you're dealing yeah. with the actual actual unemployed people? No, we're dealing with it. We deal with the companies, not the individual people. Oh, I see. There you go. All right. Yeah. Good, yeah, good times. Good times. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. All right. 
I don't like seeing people have crappy jobs. I like to walk around and look at people and their jobs and go, oh, man, I'm so glad I'm not doing that. You guys do that? I do that every Jim, day. You do that, right? Every day. All you got to do is walk. I just got to show up for my gig. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I can't believe it. So I got to wait all day for that one spot at 9 o'clock at night. Oh, I mean, you just, you just like, walk to the airport and you go, no, nope. Cinnabon? Nope, don't want to do that. <laughs> nope, you guys, security? Nope, glad I'm not doing that. It's nice. It's refreshing. Right? I'm just thinking about how that Cinnabon just pisses me off. <laughs> because they pump that smell all through the oh airport. It's addicting. Oh, my God. I know. It's really, it, 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 it's at the point where you don't even know it. Like, you just yes. walk in the airport. Yes. You're like, like I'm hungry, I could dude. go for a Danish. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. you're the guy next to you goes, I've never seen you eat a Danish in your life. What do you mean? I love Danish. Let me get extra icing. Oh, my God. Extra icing. Yeah, that, that could be dangerous. You know what's... Uh, you know, I realized, hey, here's all life is, really. I was, I was at the airport yesterday, and I figured it out. I, you, you walk through the airport, and you go, I'm glad I don't do that, glad I don't do that, glad I don't do that. Then you walk into that part where the magazines are, and there are all the hot chicks on the cover of the <laughs> magazines. You go, oh, man, I, w I wish I could do her. I wish I could do her. Who's she doing? And I wish I could do her. And why am I not doing that? Th that's it. It's, just, it's right down the middle. It's like, I'm glad I'm not doing that. Why am I not doing this? <laughs> I want to get baked with you. Yeah, we're going to we get started. we got some serious issues to talk about. <laughs> we're going to the alley. <laughs> we may create our own alley. Is there an alley around here, Drew? Yeah, they've created one we'll for you. All right, right we'll, go, we'll, we'll go, go in the alley. We'll go in the alley. Nick? Yeah. You're 23? Yeah, I'm 23. What's up? Well, um, I got married about almost six months ago now to a 21-year-old <laughs> who I've been with for almost a year now. And she's eight and a half months pregnant. Almost nine months pregnant, actually. She's about 37 weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, hit me in the past before, and she's emotionally and physically abusive. And um, Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday were awful. Tuesday, Monday, she ripped my shirt off me on my way out the door to work. Why? Fancy. Why? And then uh, I... Uh, Why? She just loses control. She gets upset, and I... I try to talk to her, and she just can't calm down, and she just, she can't talk, and she starts hitting, and she starts okay. grabbing well, she, this, and this, Your wife was traumatized severely as a child, right? Y yes, she was. What happened to her? Um, her, her parents, they, they never just argued. They would yell, and they would hit. When she would get upset like this as a kid, when she would lose control, they'd take her, and they'd just put her in the shower and turn the shower on on her. Mm. All right. Well, her. She, yeah. she absolutely needs some treatment, Nick. You, you, she's going to start doing this to your kid. Well, and that's and that's what I'm afraid of. I told her right now I'm separated from her. As of Tuesday, right. I'm separated get, from her. Get call Child Protective Services. Get social services involved. Get a therapist for her. Get this going. Even before the baby's not even born. Listen, yet. she's there's already a domestic violence issue. This needs to be reported, such as it is. Oh, oh please, I guy, I laugh you right out of the precinct. I'm afraid so. All right, hey, no, that's fine. Hey, Nick. Yeah. What's her nationality? Her nationality? She's just Anglo-Saxon. She's a white chick. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Where were her ancestors from? Um, I, I, you know what? I have no idea. I hmm. probably guess Dutch, English, something. Uh, like uh -huh. aha, aha, the Dutch. <laughs> Some of those violent people, those animals, people. yeah, savages. Yeah, yeah, well, Dutch, uh, like, Dutch or no? What flying Dutchman? Flying, flying Dutchman. Dutchman. You don't hear about the well flying known? Spaniard? No. No, he's the Dutchman. Flying Brazilian. That's right, Nick. My my question is, I'm separated from her right now. And I told her she needs to make an appointment to get help that I want to go to. Do I need to? St I mean, what? Do I go back with her right now, or do I wait till she starts getting help? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, she's she's. Uh, you know, she tells me to leave. She keeps telling me she wanted me to leave. When I do leave, then she tells me she wants me back. Oh boy, well, you got a big her. problem here. So, go get a book. Uh, there's a book out there called "I Hate You, Don't Leave Me." And hit her with go it. Go get that book. Read it. <laughs> Read the book. Whether you go back I or not, laugh at my bad joke. There's going to be lots of chaos. It doesn't really matter yeah. much. You know, just go to the most peaceable, find the most peaceable solution. But she's going to need lots of people involved. I mean, let me ask a couple of questions. First off, not a bad thing for a woman to smack you one once in a while because <sighs> I dated a chick like that. Did she? Yes. What? I got belted she, by a woman too. It was good. Scratch and all, throw my stuff. Did she? Did she apologize afterward or like the next day? Hmm. No, I don't think, no, I don't remember her no, apologizing. See, I, I, see, for me, all my relationships, are, whoever I'm with, they walk around in a constant state of dissatisfaction with my actions, Drew, you know what I'm talking about? 
women are just, you constantly feel like you're behind uh, a no, little I'm bit. I'm just shocked that someone would feel that way. I can't <laughs> you know, you're, the, you're the same way with your wife. There's a constant state of you're not living up to what they need you Never, to do. ever, ever, yeah, ever. Yeah, you have some good days. Yeah. You, you put together a good couple of days once good a month. Good hours. Yeah, but in general, uh, you're not quite living up to what they need you to live up to. I'm gonna That's fine. To. But if they whacked you just once in a while, just punch you right in the face like once a month, they'd be constantly apologizing to you. So you're better than all that negativity. The I'd rest say of the, best, the best. I would take a pop shot over a month Most of guys just mental abuse. That's just torment. What's the matter? Mm, nothing. Yeah, right. Right, yeah, you're not cutting it. Why am I going to say that? I just always talk about it, and just, yeah. it's great for yeah. a day or two, and then you, you just write back to normal. You don't listen anyway. You never listen. Right. What yeah. do we always argue about? <sighs> a sock in, a gut, in the gut, and it's not like women <laughs> hit that hard, you know? It's not, it's not like when your buddy's hitting you. you got a good point, man. Right? So let him take a pop shot, get the anger out. I'll tell you, the best thing that ever happened to me was... <laughs> Oh, God. That's the best thing that ever happened to you. Well, when I went, I mean, relationship-wise, I went to play. I was uh, living with uh, that stripper from England in North Hollywood like 12 years ago. And I told her, I used to play in a Sunday baseball, softball league. And I told her I was going out to play softball. And then afterward, I was taking her out, going to a movie, going out to eat. <clears throat> the game got canceled, so we went out drinking. And I got home loaded at like, it was like 12.30 or something night. I said I was coming home at like 5 in the afternoon and I was drunk. <laughs> you got and, like a triple that and day. And she was in two runs. You had to celebrate. No, we didn't play. That was the whole thing. We just, oh. the game got canceled. So we decided to go out and have a few drinks. And next thing you know, and uh, she, I, I passed out on the bed. I was still in my uniform and cleats and everything. And she told me to stand up. And I knew I was going to get a <laughs> shot. I did it. I, gladly. Because I would have just been torment for the rest of the week. She said, stand up. And I uh, stood up at the end of the bench. He whacked me, went right in the face, and went right back down. <laughs> and on the way down, I was thinking, good. <laughs> uh, because I'm drunk, and that was nothing. And I just whacked down. And then all she Tomorrow, did, it's a clean slate. All she did was apologize for the next week. Great. It was much better. A guy should encourage that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you should stick your chin out and dare him to shot. hit you. That's Take right. a shot. What are you waiting for? Trevor? What's up, guys? You're 19? Hey, yeah. What's One up? One thing I have, to, I have to mention this. About a month ago, I was stoned out of my mind, flipping through the channels about 2 o'clock in the night. And who pops up on the TV screen is Dr. Drew lecturing a bunch of college students about sex. Oh, in, no, no. It was in uh, in Washington, D.C., yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that was hilarious. <laughs> I, I have to admit, that, that stunned me for a little bit. <laughs> what, was really, what was so stunning about that? We were in the... was participating, really. What? No one, no one was participating. They were just sitting there, standing there, and you were speaking, and no. Yeah, one, I was giving a lecture. Yeah, but no one was really, you know, taking what you were saying. Don't people lecture back through when you lecture? Yeah. Asshole. <laughs> How could you tell? It was, just, it, was no, it was it went just fine actually. Hey, what right, what, right. what about when you when you go uh, see the opera and no one participates? <laughs> you know, no one stands up and starts singing in the audience. Hey, Adam. Yeah. Don't diss me, man. All right, but don't be a jackass. Oh, come on! You're on Howard Stern. You, you want to be a big badass, but you can't. You can't do it now. What are you talking about? No, I like you, Adam. Hey, Jim. Hey, listen, Trevor. Yeah. You liking me means nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. You, you make your millions. You, you don't even make a million. Oh. First of all, I don't care about you, Adam. You do a little love line show for. You got another question, Widow? Bring it up. Bring it up. Hurry up. Push, 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 Puke. And you're a big shot when you want to go on the yeah, Howard that's true. Stern show. You're and, a big shot, right? Uh, what do you mean when I want to go on the Howard Stern show? He calls me and asks me to fill in when Artie goes out of exactly. town once a you're month. Fill in. So don't, don't don't tell me about your your failed TV shows out there. What, oh, you're it, what failed TV shows? I don't have any failed TV shows. The, right? They're all going down the tubes. I'm, I just we're starting on 20 new episodes oh. of Crank Yankers. I did it yesterday. Unfortunately, without your help, because you have participants of all other uh, uh, phony phone calls participating in your show. I don't think this dude no, likes you. I, I know, but hey, here's he's, the like, thing. He's, like, he's like a sore I, tooth. It's like you got to keep. I don't mind if he doesn't guy. like me, but he's got to hit on something yeah, right, eventually. We're waiting for him to get traction here. Yeah, not even get any traction even. Keep going, Trevor. <laughs> what are you saying? Our calls on you saying our crank anchor calls aren't calls that we've done. I hear Jim. Uh, what's his last name? Of Florentine. Florentine. Yeah, yeah, he's on. Uh, I hear that crank I, show on Howard. I Stern. sat next to Jim Florentine for four hours yesterday right. while right. he did you. crank phone calls for I us. Mean, I, I hear the same. Uh, uh, the crank 
on another show. Is that original for your show? or? Yeah, they're all original. All right. I mean, I hear them on Howard Stern's show. With the, well, the, Jim plays them on I, Howard he's Stern. A I'm not dissing you, man. You're, you're a great guy, but can I ask <laughs> I can Jim tell. a question? Nah. I'm a big... Oh, all okay. right, hurry. Go ahead. Jim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tamara Davis directed the probably the best stoner movie of all time, 1998, uh, Half Baked. Okay. Could you? Are you people stoned when you make that movie? Can you tell me the truth? I wasn't. Oh. I, I, I swear to God, I was stoned for one scene. It was by accident. <laughs> Why? Because that was my first movie, man. I was scared. I was like, man, I'm gonna act really hard. You've been in the movie since, though. So. You, you've been huh? safe up, right? What's that? In a movie since. Say it again. Have you been in a movie since? Have I been in a movie? Yes. Yeah, I had a small part All in this right. movie, Dick. Oh, shut up, Trevor. What's he want? Damn. And listen, hold on what? a second. Trevor, you're <sighs> calling from Phoenix, not, yeah. not New York. Just drop the attitude, please, you young jackass. <laughs> Was I in the attack line next? Yeah. I couldn't tell. Yeah, it sounded I, like he was starting to warm up. He, like, guys. hooked me up with, hey, Jim, I like you. And then He's all of a sudden... guys that wonders why everyone wow. is such assholes to him. Why people treat him like crap. Wow. He's, He's a, a real nice stoner. He's not a stoner. stoner well, stoner here... Stoner yeah, that's, like that. that's, that's true. Mellow, well, he should, Maybe he should get this. <laughs> you, know, you know what? You know what? It strikes me, and, and uh, these are usually ha folks that listen to Howard wow, Stern. He's angry, that dude. I got no problem with Howard Stern, but... People mistake sort of attitude for a sense of humor. Yeah. They all become like uh, the jerky boys. Yes. Like, hey, tough guy. Hey, oh, yeah. And it's like, okay, <laughs> that's all great, but eventually you have to say something funny. Yeah, where's the traction? It's like, yeah. 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 Hey, you know, that man show, <laughs> that man show is, uh, hey, I just sat with Comedy Central two days ago and they begged me to do the man show for another season and they threw all kinds of money at me. The show's doing great. Every the goddamn show I'm doing is doing great. What's his thing? It's hey, you. You go on Stern like you're a big man. What the hell's he talking about? Stern calls once every two months and wants me to do the show. He probably wears, you know, he's in stuck his stock and Sears and stuff. <laughs> he's got to hear it from the crew and he's a little oh, angry. From Phoenix though. What the hell's that gonna work? Oh, yeah, yeah, you got the sun, the <clears throat> desert. Relax. Yeah. That might happen to you too if you lived in Phoenix. Oh. You know. 118 I degrees. like Phoenix. I no, don't. you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> Nobody likes Phoenix. I guess we want to visit. Uh, when you're inside. Indoors. Jim Brewer is our <laughs> guest tonight. Now, I say Brewer, but is it like Brewer? Brewer. 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 Yeah, because it's not normally, it's not spelled how a Brewer is spelled, but it's like Brewer. It's Brewer. Jim Brewer. So you like the end of the night. Brewer. Is our uh, guest tonight. We're going to uh, hear something off his CD. I think uh, uh -oh. Anderson may be uh, looking through it and seeing what he can fix up and what's clear. And uh oh, he's going to say no something. Clue. I have no clue. Stuff no clue. No clue. No clue. A lot of profanity we'll, in we'll there. We'll talk to Jim. Well, All right. It's like stories I can't do on TV. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe too dirty. Smoking Brew is the name of the uh, CD. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hello, this is the Mango from the Saturday Night to the Live. And you did listen to the love line with the Adam Carolla sauce and the Drew man with the ass. No! You can't have a man! No mango for you! Yeah, drop try. <laughs> yeah. Drop try. That's it, where are them juggies? <laughs> yeah, you got them with you? <laughs> Where are they? How many times have we asked that? Yeah, where are the juggies? Yeah. Hey, they're all getting. Uh, I'm. I'm. In, what time is it? I'm at four. Four o'clock. I'm. I'm. I'm hoping they're asleep. <laughs> they could be hopped up on coke with some Arab guys, but they probably passed out by now. <laughs> yeah. What's the Arab guys? <laughs> what is that? Arab guy? Oh yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Jim Brewer is our guest tonight. Um, Jim's uh, got himself a uh, comedy CD out called uh, Smoke and Brew, and. Uh, Got some uh, dates coming up here. It's going to be at the uh, House of Blues, all of them, on the uh, 25th. He's in L.A., and uh, that's September. And uh, October 4th, Anaheim, October 5th, Las Vegas. And, uh, Jim, what, uh, four years on uh, SNL? Yes. Let's see. Actually, it was like three. It was three. It three. was 95, 98. It was part of the new cast. Who, was, uh, who came in when you came in? Sherry O'Terry, Molly Shannon. Uh, Mark McKinney, Will Farrell. This, oh, this guy's all. That was all your your class, as it we were. were the, we were the new class, and uh, we were the '95 class. Norm McDonald was like the veteran. How do you uh, how'd you get along with Norm? Norm was my favorite cast member. 
Yeah. He was he was the only guy. This is when I knew Norm. Norm was the only guy. You know when you get a job, and like they give you the big speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we expect this from you. Blah, 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 and go out there and do it. And then as soon as you're done, you get the one guy. Listen, well, he said, forget that. Here's how it goes down. Mm -hmm. That was like Norm was that guy in the cast. He, you know, because Mondays we pitch our ideas to a host. I remember I had one season under my belt. You know, I'm starting to buy new clothes, get a car. I got a goat thing, and Tom Hanks. <laughs> I got a goat. Thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. Tom Hanks. <laughs> I'm flipping out. This is the first real big star on here. And uh, you can tell we were all starstruck. And Sherry O'Terry said, come on, get a just cheerleader. She pitches her thing. Everyone's pulling out their big cannons. Uh, I'm going to do Mary Catherine Gallagher. I'm going to do the goat. And Norm's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do the guy who poops his pants. <laughs> you're like the guy, you're like, ah, I got poop in my pants. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> he, uh... There's a, there's a story I, ca I can't tell it now. I did on the thing there, and he, uh, they were in a press conference. It's on the CD. Did you see him, do, did you see no, him on Dennis on Miller? There. Wait, wait, what did he say? No. On that thing there, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm there. guessing <laughs> the CD, to, yeah. to the CD that's no, not Dennis in this Miller? room. No. By far, Norm was the funniest guy on the show. He just said it the way it was, and if he didn't like it. Right. Right. Even told him, don't put me in sketches. Right. I'm going to do an update, don't put me in a little gay sketch in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I like Norm. Norm, uh, Norm of, uh, I know a little bit, and um, he's a, he's he's authentically a strange guy. I mean, he's a strange it, bird. It's not a, it's not an act. I mean, the guy is a gambling. But he problem. tells you right up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I've never, uh, I don't know any. I mean, women like him, but I don't know any women that like him. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't like, like like him. They're the spite ones. Yeah, it, it's not. I don't know. I think he's a misogynist, but uh, he definitely seems to get along with them. I don't think he has they a lot of... They think he's hot. Every chick that meets him is like, oh, my God, look at me out my Norm MacDonald. Yeah. I'm like, are you sure? Because uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. don't come to me after I do. No, yeah. I don't you. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah bro. Big gambler. I love it when he does the uh, younger Burt Reynolds, the smoking the bandit <laughs> yeah. Burt Reynolds. You ever see that? Yep. He just sits there with that bad fake mustache. <laughs> yeah, what are you saying after? Yeah. <laughs> he dresses in the smoking the bandit outfit, and he just sort of stands <laughs> there, and he does that chewing motion, you know? Yeah. 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 He doesn't really say anything. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. Who decided to do that? Like, he did. 17 years after smoking the band, he did. Released. That's why he's genius, man. He's yeah, I don't know where he is though. He used where to come he? out. He used to. I don't know. He used to come out and warm up the shows. Oh really? At Sound it live, and he go. Uh, I would go up and try to kill. I just try to blow the place out the water. Give him my A material for 10 minutes. Would you pull the goat boy out? So I'd pull the goat. All the big guns are coming right. out. Norm would come out and he go. Yeah, I'm working on a new impression. And he'd go, uh, he go, here's, uh, okay, uh, Johnny Carson, uh, uh, bring it out, a uh, famous act. Okay, anyway. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring out, I'm a big famous guy. Uh, I need some work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Be so bad. Yeah, I'm, I, I just did Norm. care. I like him. I gotta get Norm back on to something. <laughs> Amy? Or maybe off of something. Amy, you're 22, yeah. but hold on a second. I was reading the screen. At least he doesn't hide it. No, no, he's got problems. Jordan? Yeah. You're 15? Yep. You had sex for the first time? Yeah. When? I had sex about a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I believe him. Yeah. See? And he lasted to her uh, one minute? Yep. I, yeah, I, don't, too. I don't know if it's pleasing for the girl or not, you know? Don't worry about it. Not, not at this stage. Not, nothing you do first time out is going to be particularly pleasing for her. Was it her first? Uh, uh, no, it wasn't her first. Right. It's like her second or third. It's still, she got a ways to go before it becomes actually. But is pleasant. that normal though? Or well, that's good. yeah. First time out, most guys are rather rapid or have trouble getting an erection. That's real. There's always some trouble that runs the spectrum of uh, too long or too quick or not at all. But yeah. there's always something. That's scary. Go, go, yeah. Go ahead and get a relationship going with her, and uh, things will work themselves out. Yeah. Is she your, your girlfriend, Jordan? Yeah, she's my girlfriend. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I mean. It, is it okay for her to get angry at me? Should I just let that go? Or? Did she get angry at you? Uh, no, she just like, well, kind of, you know, because she didn't get any pleasure out of it. Well, what about oral wow. sex? Uh, no, we haven't tried that yet. All right. What do you mean she got angry? Yeah. yeah that's now, weird. What do, you, what do you mean, Jordan? Well, I mean, she didn't get angry, but she just, you know, 
she wasn't very pleased about it, you know. She, What'd she say? She's like, she's like, well, you know, I didn't get any pleasure out of this, you know. I don't know if we should do this again. Okay, now it's about me. Yeah. Sorry, George. That's BS. And who's your uh, buddy with uh, with We're tuberculosis yeah. who's uh, breathing in the background? Oh, that's me. Oh, okay. I'm a huge fan of the show. I've been listening to six, six great. All Thanks, right. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's all bad. Right, listen, buddy, you gotta you gotta get an inhaler before you before you get on the other line. All right. I love yeah. your show, man. Show, man. Thanks, buddy. <sighs> listen, you jack off. <laughs> if you're gonna call the show and have your buddy on the second line. Don't have making love to the receiver. <laughs> Swallowing it. He's just yeah, hanging I mean, out. <laughs> That's what he says, really him. <laughs> it's really them, man. And what's the guy doing? Beating on? Like, oh, He's yeah. just very excited hearing your voice. He's excited, Adam. yeah. Oh, okay, but uh, now I don't know if they, they don't make phones this way anymore, but back in the day we used to just unscrew the receiver. Or you'd put a handkerchief over the <laughs> Remember that whole trip? Yeah. But you'd put your hand on it. You just, you'd listen. You don't need, see, like, remember the old school phones? You could physically unscrew yeah, the sure. thing and oh, pop yeah. that thing Still out. Still a wire, too, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. So I don't believe that kid, right? No, ridiculous. He, I believe he's a virgin. Not a virgin, though. I got I got not a virgin from his voice. I don't know. I don't know, Drew. He may be wow, a virgin. Wow, you can tell right in the voice. He may be a virgin. And he's, you know, guys who get laid don't make as many prank calls. By the way, that's when the prank calling ends for guys. That's why all you and all your comedic buddies. That's why we're still doing them. All the crazy things okay. end. Let me see. Jordan? Right, yeah. Hey there. Listen, you're a virgin, yes? Uh, no. Seriously? No, I'm not. He's a, he's a one-timer. Yeah, yeah. one-timer. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. See, it's, it's, see we, can, we can tell the sound of a guy's voice who's a virgin and a guy who's getting laid a lot. But the one-time guys, it's Every hard because it's a little, it's the crossover voice. All right, let's talk to... Uh, Still cracks. Amy. And by the way, we, we know it's a bogus call because no woman says, I'm angry. I'm angry <laughs> and I'm not satisfied, so we shouldn't do this anymore. Right. What was that? No, they think that after every lovemaking session. From the they don't from verbalize. From <laughs> then on. That's right. right. Amy? Yeah? You're 22? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, um, I don't know necessarily where to start. Um, I've been in a relationship, committed relationship, for about two years. And um, we decided to have some fun. And um, we brought, well, a girl I was attracted to into the relationship and had her a couple times. And then her boyfriend wanted to join us, so we had him in the relationship. Wow. And, of course, we had unprotected sex. And about ten days ago, I had a nice, wonderful sore um, in the area between my anus and my vagina mm -hmm. and I decided to go to the doctor because I have regular physicals in May I had a full STD check and um, I tested positive for herpes what do you mean and you tested positive? What, are they, what tests did they give you? Well, they, what they did is they more or less scraped the cells okay. and All right. she well, opened that's, up yep. and looked on All my right. cervix Alright, so. that's how you do it, okay um, But ultimately I started the medicine I'm on Veltrex now mm -hmm. and um, I just need to know how to approach this couple that we've been with. I mean, I don't want to point fingers and I don't want to, because the blame's on myself for more or less having unprotected sex with mm -hmm. them. But, um, I mean, I need to know more or less how to approach them and how I should handle my sex life in the future. Well, I mean, as far as, I think you have a sort of ethical obligation and it's be, from a medical standpoint, definitely important that they know that Wait, they have this thing. Do you think they don't know? Well, if they sometimes women don't know, some women carry and don't know. But the point is, your obligation. Would you get it? Would you get it from the woman or from the guy, though? Well, that's what I want to kind of know too. Is I mean, the the cl clinician, I guess, is her name. I don't know. The lady I talked to at the clinic said that um, people carry it and they don't know. That's right, so women they have their first outbreak. Um, it's more no, not their first outbreak. They they have outbreaks and sort of miss them. Okay. How do you miss that? Because sometimes they're not that severe, or they're inside the vagina, they're not on the outside. Yeah, but how does the woman give it to the other woman on her vagina? Well, it's in it's in the between Anusberg and vagina Vaginaville, yeah. Yeah, but and maybe it was on somebody's hands. You see what I'm really? saying? Really? Wow! Can well, pass through it like that? Mm -hmm. What was going on? Did her uh, vagina get near your vagina? Well, I was I was fisted. <laughs> But there, I mean, that could be something also. But hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. What happened to you? <laughs> I got to laugh and beat off. Hold on. I didn't think this stuff really happened. I we were we were together when it, the four of us were together um, is right after the outbreak occurred. But um, oh wait a second, I I'm curious what her boyfriend does during the fisting. <laughs> like, Sweetie, I'm going in the kitchen. You want a tab or anything? 
You want to have it? How about, I, I know you got... I gotta get the one hand used up, but uh, Bob, you want a Michelob or something? You How hear about... him in the other room. What are you swinging at? You a That's a high pitch, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> He's watching Sports Center, <laughs> drinking a beer. I was fisted. Uh, let me ask about the fisting. It's something that seems to be thrown about uh, quite uh, casually, but are people it's making a fist and? They go in and make the fist, but... But it's, it's done with the, the... What would this be called? Uh, well, it's fisting. snake. Yeah. snake it's, it's, it's fisting. It's like when you're trying to get that last pickle out of the jar. You don't make the fist and ram it in. You slide it's it in. And then get something out of, the, out of the garbage disposal. Right. Yeah. Oh, true. <laughs> no, that's what it what is. What kind of euphemism but is I mean, that for a woman's euphemism. vagina? It's just how the hand the is Garbage disposal. I've never heard it referred to as a garbage disposal. <laughs> Wait till I tell your wife you, what you, you called her. You haven't seen Amy. Oh. Right? <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah. Hey, Amy. Yeah, I'm glad you guys have humor over this. Well, you know, that's that's the way we deal with tragedy. Okay. Right. Now, let me just ask, and we'll, we'll answer your question, but the fisting part. Mm -hmm. um, no fist on the way in, right? Well, it's like, I mean, I'm wet and I'm moist and it's, I mean, I like the pressure. Um, in fact, I'm actually scared that when I have children, I'll orgasm from it because I like I like the pressure that that's there when now if you if you orgasm does the kid just go shooting out like well, uh, you're launching a water balloon know. from one of those no okay and the fisting part but here's my question about the fisting because I'm unclear is the fist made before it enters the vagina or is it is it let in sort of like uh, your hand is in a sock puppet and then made into a fist? Well, it depends upon the size of the hand. I, I, I see. In this case... In this case, what happened? The fingers were inserted in, in like a cup-shaped yes. type. Right. And then the fist is made? It's more or less just continually pressed in until I can't handle the pressure anymore, and then I tell them to get out. All right. So it's, it's not really a fisting, is it? But it's, a full, it's a full handing, right? Uh, sure, we could call it fingering, but it's, I mean, usually to the wrist. Okay. It's to the wrist. Wristing. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and where's, now, who was doing this to you? Um, actually, two people at various different times. One, the female, and the other, my... She's my getting my stuffed all over. First, the female, and then your, your guy went in when well, she lost her watch, her or... would fit further than, than the guy's, because the guy, he's got larger hands. And her hands were smaller, so they wanted to see. And is the, was the guy... What's the guy doing while she's fisting? They're usually sitting on the side, touching themselves, jacking off, whatever. I mean, it's <laughs> an awe and amazement of what's being done. Hold on, Jim, what kind of retarded question? What's the guy doing? Was of course he's feeding off. <laughs> well, I didn't he's know going. if he was trying to stuff somewhere else, and, you know, and trying well, okay. to feel her out where she's going. Now, this was, this was uh, the girl and your Fist man, the or the girl and her man? It was actually all of us, but the hands that were inside of me was my man and, I see. and her. Because you're, you're traditional that way? Well, I prefer anything and everything, but that's what gets me into this situation. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, now, Amy... Yes. This is interesting to me. Okay. Uh, um, let me see if I can get a physical uh, description of you. 38 double D. Oh. Um, I have about mm, a 34 waist. I mean, that my jeans are men's 34s. Uh, You're right. fat. True, please. Let's yeah. Not, uh, yeah, I'm very voluptuous. I have an hourglass figure. I got a big-ass booty. And, yeah, if you want to call it fat, that's great. But all right, all right. I get no, what I want. I, you get what you want. Now, that's the beauty of being one. Now, how tall do you go? I'm five seven. Five seven. What do you weigh in at? Too much. Too much. Uh, yeah. Two hundred. Two fifty. Uh, about one eighty. About one eighty. Let me do yes. some quick math. Do your here. math, yes. And I know what venison is, and I know what veal hold on, is. Hold on, so. baby. Thank you. Five uh, five seven one eighty. Come the five. Yes. I got uh, five five and and uh, three sixteens. <laughs> one ninety seven. <laughs> Oh, thank you. All right. Not bad. You didn't crack the 200. Not too bad. Oh, baby. What happened to you growing up? Anything bad? No, I had a pretty normal life besides the fact that my parents got divorced, but that happens with everyone. No uh, no fisting in your no, youth? No, I was never sexually abused. Uh -huh. I was always intrigued by sex, though. I mean, like, I read form um, from my parents. And what? Did they, from so your they, parents? So they had a bunch of pornography lying around when you were a kid? Well, no. no I mean, I would actually, like, hunt for it, but that was just because I was intrigued by it. How old were you when... when uh, Probably about eight, nine. And, and did you, did oh, you true. walk so, in your parents or anything, doing anything ever? I mean, I could hear them. They had a waterbed. Okay. But Ooh, otherwise... Waterbed. 
Yeah. That's therapy right there. <laughs> just parents with a water folks bed. Folks have water bed. You got to. That's at least five, five years, years therapy. Five years minimum. Yeah, if it was heated, you're up to seven years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but All right, but wait, Amy, Amy, I'm not done. Now, what does your man do? Anything? Uh, He's so actually a firefighter. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And this couple, uh, so friends, huh? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we play darts with them. Wow. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> uh, why not play a uh, parlor game after you're done fisting uh, <laughs> your friend? Uh, so I say, who's up for darts? Well, I'm not done fisting your wife, Chet. Uh, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start warming up. You all right? Let's have some pork chops, some beer, and fist your wife. Who's in? <laughs> let's, uh, let's flip it over and play the baseball side of the dartboard this time. Let's live. Does anyone ever do that, by the way? Has yeah, anyone no, ever no. In, the, in, the, in the human history played the baseball game on the back of the dartboard? No, so, no. Uh, Amy. Yeah. I uh, I think well, it seems to me that you have a an open relationship with these people. I mean, you're someone who doesn't mind speaking your mind. You've got to just let them just put them on notice. I, I think you, I, whether you want to send them a letter or whatever, they probably knew about it. They probably exposed you to it. I, I probably. Yeah, I but mean, it, it doesn't that. it doesn't make them bad people, but I, I, uh, I the, yeah. it could make them bad people. But they probably were aware they got herpes and. Uh, God knows uh, where people as uh, demure as these people would have picked up herpes along the way, but sometimes tragedy strikes good people. Nice young couple. I wonder how Amy avoided it so long. Yeah, she's, she's 22, all of 22. Yeah. And, yeah, there's no doubt that, that uh, she need, she she should worry about sexual relationships in the future. Just be honest with people. Make sure they wear a condom. Make sure you're not having an outbreak. And they, they should be reasonably protected. All right. Let's uh, take ourselves a little break. Jim Brewer is our guest tonight. We'll uh, hear something. Off his uh, new CD, Smoke and Brew. Wait a minute, it's not out yet, is it? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. We'll uh, take a little break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Jim Brewer is our guest tonight. CD is called Smoke and Brew. That is out in a couple days. And uh, it says, oh, we are, we're in September, aren't we? We are. Isn't that sick? Jesus We're almost Christ. done with it. Sick. What's the date? 19th, 20th. 20th? Shh. Oh, boy. i got to make a move. <sighs> All right. So uh, I'll tell you what. Well, uh, here's something off the new CD. I think uh, let's try to power through a couple calls, and we'll uh, hear it after the break. Eddie? Yeah. You're 26? Uh-huh. Your penis goes limp during sex? Yep. When you're uh, in a woman, it goes limp? Yeah. You're, you're, able, gay. you're able to penetrate, but that's it. Yep. In order for me to get erect again, you got to give me oral. And then once I get back in, I go limp again. Are you on medication? Nope. Do you have any medical problems? Nope. This happened with all the women you're with? Um, actually, it's, it's just with my girlfriend now. We've been together for like six months now. Never happened before this? Before it, it happened, but not as regular as it does now. You have any sense what's causing it? Uh, I have no idea. That's what I'm calling the act to see if you can give me an idea of what it is. Is she, is she uh, unusually moist? Yeah, very. Is something making yeah, you that's it. Something making you nervous? Yeah, like self confidence, huh? Okay. Something <laughs> making you nervous? No. Nothing. Hmm. Nothing Maybe it's I, the moisture it, factor. Mm. Not getting the uh, friction? Nope, I'm getting none at all. It's, it's just like I'm hitting nothing. Even the mental game? I, I actually had this problem. He's saying Once he doesn't feel it. anything when he enters her. You don't feel anything when you're in? No, nah, because she gets so wet that, you know, it's like I'm, I'm feeling nothing. There is such a thing. Yeah. And what do you do? Is, uh, dump some kitty litter down there? <laughs> How do you mop that up? Air it out or something. Yeah, what do you do? I mean, seriously, could you turn a, a hair dryer on her or something? <laughs> huh? Maybe wear a dry condom or something? Or How about a... Yeah, what about a condom? Like a non-lubricated condom? That doesn't work. Makes it worse for him, probably. Hmm. And uh, so it's because of her moisture, huh? Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. Well, what now... Now, uh, what do you give her? Do you give her oral sex? Uh-huh. And is she like that? Yeah. And she has an orgasm? Yep. Can you Wait. get that out of the way first? Maybe it'll slow things down a little bit? I, yeah, I usually have someone do that. Yeah, then form. you come in. <laughs> yeah, my assistant do that, get that out of the way, and then I come in and mop up. But, uh, Eddie? Yeah? I think what you're going to have to do, because this is probably her moisture, why don't you do this? 
I, I know this sounds a little weird, but why don't you do it for a couple of beats and keep a towel or something uh, next to you and just, you know, pull it out and sort of dry it off and get it back in there and see if you can get some, some friction going. Or get the get the oral and just uh, go in and, you know, get right to the point where you're about to go with the oral and then hop on and finish off. Man, I, I don't know what you can do about the moisture thing, but I do know what he's talking about. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? All right. Let's, uh, uh -huh. yeah, we got to take a break. Yeah, that's that's too fast. One. Matt? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. No, you're not. No, he sounds like he's 12. You are not 17. Yeah, I'm 17. Really? Virgin, yeah. right? What? Virgin? Yeah, yeah, virgin. Yep, yeah, that's that voice. Mm-hmm. You want to know uh, how Jim picks his movies? Yeah. Jim, how do you pick your movies? How do I pick my movies? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, when you get an offer, like, do you just, like, look at the script or, like, do you read about it and, like, think you, you'd be good for the part or... <laughs> You like, get a you script think, you, you and think... hope you get it if <laughs> you go audition for it. Um, oh, really? But, like, you talking, like, with half bait? Yeah. I like, haven't done a whole lot. All I did really was, uh, like, two independent films and half baked was it. But for a, a regular actor, you, uh, you know, you get an agent and they send you out on auditions and you read a script and you go for it. Or you, if you're such thing as a patient actor, you wait for the right... Jim gets hundreds of scripts script. yeah. each month. He has his staff go through them. They pick the ones they think are going to be right for him. And then he has his secretary read them aloud while he watches Sports <laughs> Center and yeah. runs on a treadmill. All right, Matt. Uh, I got uh, another question for Jim. No. we gotta go to, <laughs> we got to no. go to break. Right, Sorry, buddy. No. I cannot have. I cannot have. We'll uh, take a quick break. Jim Brewer is our guest tonight. We'll hear something off the uh, new CD, Smoke and Brew, when we come back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Jim Brewer is our guest tonight, known from my Saturday Night Live and a uh, handful of movies, TV appearances, that kind of thing. Uh, fistin'. Fistin'. Goat Boy. <laughs> He's going, fistin' Goat Boy? Fistin', fistin Goat, goat Boy. boy. It's nice. going to be the name of the next uh, CD. Big <laughs> Smoke and Brew is the name of the uh, CD, and uh, it is uh, coming out in a couple of days. Yeah. I think we're going to uh, hear... Not, uh, now, now it's a lot of stories. I it's mean, a lot of stories, like, uh, a lot of stories about me at SNL, first time there, Norm, t a lot of my, ca I can't do, you know, Norm's a blue guy, so I can't, a lot of my stories. Right. <laughs> stories I can tell in the, in the regular arena. Now, we're going to, uh, hear stand something. up some stand up. Hear something off the, uh, CD, but, uh, now we're hearing, uh, Hokey Pokey, but we're not hearing the whole thing. Right. No, nah, it's long, bro. All right, so we'll hear uh, a couple minutes of it, right? This is just me doing ACDC, doing the hokey pokey. Here it is. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I'm a jackass. You, you tour with the band? <laughs> yeah, man. It's all like friends that I grew up with. <laughs> wow. We have fun. That's great. It's like being hanging out in your basement. And, and uh, these guys go with I mean, if you're... If you're going to be, like, at the House of Blues, right. these guys are with you. They're with me. They know ev they played, like, wedding bands their whole lives. Wow. So they know any tune. Like, sometimes we'll be in the middle of something, and so, hey, do free bird. You know, everyone says something. They know, they can right on cue hit anything. And do you but know, most do you know free bird? No, no. I'm not out there singing. That's the only time, you know, I can do, like, ACDC. That's about it. Yeah, but uh, most of the time they're in the back. I'll tell stories and they play like background music. You know, if I'm talking about drinking, they play like a blues tune. Really? I do stand up and they just play background music. Yeah, that's a good idea. You need to go around with the band all the time. It's fun, man. It's about your bad. friends don't do anything. Well, I wanted to do that, but with mariachis, and yeah. I, just, I wanted <laughs> yeah. them to play when I entered whatever room. <laughs> you know, like when a Mexican fighter enters the ring. Oh yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> guy, with dun, dun, dun. The, guy with the big guitar and the trumpets fire up as I step into the party. <laughs> Everyone knows I'm coming because they see him setting up. They see you coming. Oh, yeah. Corolla must be here. You see that guy yeah. with the huge, huge... See that little short, fat guy with the huge, huge guitar? It's always the short, fat guy with the little huge guitar. Little fat one. dude. Yeah, he's getting ready. If he's really good, he'll have huge a little hat, stash. Huge guitar. Yeah. Like and, you know, it's only the real good ones. The, 
the thing about that huge fat guitar, it never really caught on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like no one else ever played. It, it it's just shocking too. You would think because it crushes in their culture. Crushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's huge, but you never see any old pictures of Hendrix or Townsend or anybody with the huge Surprise fat it guitar. Surprised crossover. Yeah, I am surprised. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's like it's not like. It, you know, the pinata made it over. The goddamn sitar made it over. The it. sitar pinata made it. Pinata made it huge, too. It tears up at parties. Sitar uh, made it from India. Yep. Hey, if you have the sitar could make guitar. it, the big gourd guitar would work. Yeah. We should look into that. Yeah. Because it has so much if to only George Harris were still alive. He'd hey, bring it over. Yeah. He'd go over there. He'd go over there. Yeah. He'd do the uh, concert <laughs> for Tijuana. <Yeah. laughs> Paige? Paige, you're 17? Oh, oh. Yeah. What's going yeah. on back there? They're yelling at you about piercing? Yeah. Who, your parents? No, no, I'm I'm in a, a dorm room, and my friends, oh, they think I'm so stupid, but they're the ones who made me call. You going to college? Yeah. Where? Are you, where? I don't want to say. All right, but you're uh, in the Portland area? Yeah. All right, and uh, you did get a piercing, or you're going to get a piercing? No, I, I got one. Or what kind? Uh, I got one in the hood. Um, in the neighborhood? No, the hood <laughs> over my... Yeah, Hold on a second. Drew made a joke, everybody. Let's just pause for a second. <laughs> Let's give like five seconds of silence because we don't, this doesn't happen all the time. You ready? And... <laughs> all right, we're back. <laughs> yeah, you got it in the, uh, the hood of your clitoris. Yes. Right. And uh, how was it? Was it painful? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I was pretty drunk, mm -hmm. but, yeah. And, who, and you're not 18 yet? No. Where did you get someone to do that to you without being 18? Um. Oh, my God, I want to know. We went downtown, and I don't, I was pretty messed up at the time, but we went into this guy's apartment, and he had some things, and everyone thought it was really cool, and another guy got, like, something done before me, so... Did you see them open up the equipment? In other words, was this all sterile equipment? Uh, I think so. Did you uh, see them open the package? No. I'm really confused about the, the night exactly what went on. Oh, my God. Man, it happened but to me once. You got bloated yeah, and you yeah, came out with a piercing. So, I had a chandelier hanging from my hood when I got home. Oh, my God. I was wondering because, like, I couldn't get my pants up the next morning. It said like, a huge chandelier hanging from my clitoris hood. I was like, what? What? Where did this come from? <laughs> Chimpanzee was, in the bathroom. Confused. There's still plaster hanging off it, so I know it was torn off of the roof of, like, a spellings place. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, hey, Paige? Yes? You, you have a problem with alcohol? Evidently. Um, I've 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 gone drinking a couple times. Mm -hmm. Um. And it, was this a strange guy who did this to you? <laughs> well, the guy who did it, yes. Um, the guys are where I with they go to school and. Do you know them now? The guys uh, you went to school with? Um. I yeah. Did I you ask them who had done this and whether it was sterile, whether this guy was reputable? I'm really nervous to talk to them. Um. What I'm most concerned about, I have these <laughs> two symptoms. Uh oh. Uh, one is my butthole's the size there of me. There we go. Oh, yeah. oh it, Drew, no. Drew knew. Drew said, the, Drew. Drew said the voice. Shut yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up! When you, when you started going south, I went, oh, Adam, it's bogus. Drew looked at me and said, uh, yeah, he said the voice. I, I said, no, I said, I was, I was bogus. bogus. He said bogus, yeah. Bogus? Yeah. Drew caught, you know, you got it out. You did pretty good there, Paige, but I do want you to know that Drew did say bogus under his breath. He is the master. Couple, couple of but that was good. That was a good one, that. though. That was good. All right, baby. I, I, I gotta be honest. I didn't buy the whole... No, nah, I bought it. We really... <laughs> <laughs> I bought it. Hey, <laughs> nice work, Paige. Thank you very much. All right, Paige. Bye, babe. Bye, -bye. See, see bye. Right. Hey, but you know, we, the guy that invented the mason jar butthole called the show when you were away. Mm -hmm. With a real problem. Wait, well, it's Phil Jimmit. He's, he's looks good. What's the mason jar butthole? Oh, boy. Well, how do, you, how do you explain? Well, you know the hokey pokey is a dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the, no. Uh, a guy called in four years ago, five four or years five ago. years ago, and he would start to tell a story, and then at the very end, he would end it with she had a mason jar. Yeah, uh, she had a butthole the size of a mason jar. Gotcha. And then it became the sort of tag to all bogus calls. That Any caller would throw And then people okay. would try to call the show, and they'd try to draw us in with a story, and then they would end with uh, a butthole the size of a mason jar. 
And uh, this spread, and this guy had his legions. It's it's one of these things where I don't know, even know if he spoke to these people. Oh, it's no. Just caught on. Oh, over absolutely the air. not. He, he, he apologized when he called him a couple weeks ago. But oh, really? I'd never tell you, and I asked him that I tell you where he got the whole idea, and he'd heard Adam refer to someone's but it did sound a little too clever for a caller. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but uh, the po the point is, is people start doing it now. Uh, oh, did Paige go? Yeah. See, women do it on occasion too, but I believe guys put them up to it. Yeah. Women don't think that way. They don't have that bogus call gene. You, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I have to agree with you. Guys, they're doing. Unless a, they're really young. They're doing the bidding for a guy, and guys know that when a guy calls the show, we immediately <laughs> get suspicious. So they put, get their female friends to right. do it for them. But she she sold it okay with yeah, the piercings pretty good. Yeah, and the pretty good. hood and the people. The story was well roommates thought out, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I don't mind a bogus call. Here, let me explain my role here. My role is to be here for two hours and get paid and go home. <laughs> I don't care if you want to do nothing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm like an attorney that you have for two hours, and you could talk about your divorce or you could talk about golf. It doesn't matter. I'm billing you for the two hours, and then I'm going home. I'd actually prefer that you spoke about golf. It's easier. I don't have to do, I don't have to work. Sure. So yeah. the, that's the bogus call. Yeah, the that's golf. what the bogus call. That's what the bogus call is. Jay? Yeah. You're, uh, you're 30? Yes. What's up? Hey, uh, this is Jason here. Um, <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> oh my God. You know what's weird that uh, never used to happen to me in, in life, and, and now it's going on, and you guys probably experienced this and probably have for a while now, is, you know, when I used to work, when I was a carpenter, you showed up at work and it was time to work. You just started working. There's no conversation about anything. Now you go out on all these lunches and stuff, and you have these conversations have nothing to do with work, but you're always waiting for the point when you get down to business. So you sit down with somebody. It's like some executive from comedy. So, how you doing? <laughs> good, good. That was the drive over. It's good. Go traffic, L.A. traffic. Oh, wow, I'll tell you the traffic. And you start talking, but now you start thinking, when are we going to start talking about whatever? And then there's a certain point where they kind of sit up and they slide their chair up and they go... Well, I'm glad you met me here today. And now you go, okay, here's Let's here's go. where it yeah. begins. Here's yeah. where it begins. But there's always at least, and I don't know what that time is. In it's about my, 8 to 14 minutes of nonsense in, before in, everything. In my real life, you know, when I'm practicing medicine, that 18 to 14 minutes does not exist. You can't waste that 8 minutes. Right. You can't even sit down to eat. Right. Yeah. It's ridiculous. That's what I like about show business is all the extraneous conversations that go on before you get to whatever it is oh, you're going to talk to. It makes me insane. Why? Why? You don't have to talk business. Because I've got other stuff I should be doing with that 8 to 15 minutes. True. You know True. If an executive sat you down for lunch, be the best day of your life, please. <laughs> How dare you. All right. Where were we? Were we talking to uh, Jay? No, Jay. To John. I want to talk to John. First. You don't want to talk to Jay? We'll get back to Jay. Hold all on. right. John? Yes. You're 20? Yes. You were, uh, let's see, kicked out of the Air Force? Yep. What'd you do? Um, got in a little conversation with a girl that I was seeing. Ooh. Was she enlisted? Uh, yes, yeah, she was. Mm hmm Why'd you ask that? Why'd I ask that? Yeah. Well, because if you get into a confrontation with a girl you're seeing and she's not part of the Air Force, then mm. they probably won't kick you out of the Air Force. Oh, really? Well, they don't know about it. Oh, that... Necessarily. Okay. Well, I mean, unless you mm -hmm. drag her onto the sh onto the uh, tarmac and start beating the crap. So you mean out it was her. something <laughs> that happened during, like, while they were working together, kind of thing? I don't know. It was on and off. On and off. She reported you. Uh, yes and no. Um, we were seeing each other, kind of. Actually, we were seeing each other. But um, what happened was uh, she started losing interest in me, so I had to kind of ignore her. And then next thing I know, she's another it. guy. I see. So I kind of put her off to the side. And then she started wanting to come talk to me all the time. Uh -huh. And I pushed her away. And she got kind of pissed about it. Right. And the day before I was leaving that base, I got in a conversation with her and I said some things. Not exactly what she says I said, but she kind of overdrew it. Yeah. And she reported me to my commanding officer and I got in trouble for it. And that's it? You're out? That was it. One infraction? It was a pretty big infraction, as they say it. Her vo her word against yours? Uh, sure. Her boy, her new boyfriend uh, was a witness. I Did see. you threaten to harm her? Huh? Did you threaten to hurt her? No. And this this was your only infraction while in the Air Force? That and something of small when I was in boot camp. That's, uh, there we go. starting to make sense. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. So anyway, they didn't like you. You're a troublemaker. 
that, that that's, that's how it started. And since then, I've been having some problems with relationships. All right. And that's where my question comes into play. Now, what do they give you? They give you a dishonorable it discharge? Was an honorable uh, discharge. Under it was a honor, they call it an honorable, honorable. general. Right. right. That really means it, it's got to mean you're a huge f up, and they just want to get rid of you, doesn't it? Basically, <laughs> not really though. No, but listen, you can't yeah, be so doing your his job. Mind is like not really. It's like, mom, yeah. listen, it's really not like that. When they give you the honorable it's discharge, honorable. it's like, buddy, <laughs> you, you ain't cutting it. Just get out of here. What were you doing in the Air Force? Uh, I was a firefighter. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, so now you're having difficulties in relationships. I uh, well, I I I never really did before, and right now, uh, when I got back and my parents found out that I got kicked out, uh, they kicked me out of the house as well. Mm-hmm. So you know, was, I had. Was your dad a military guy? Huh? Was your dad in the military? Uh, no, but it, it's a family thing. Uh, his uh, his brother was in the military. He was a general, actually. Mm. So right. it was kind of a they kind of pushed me to go. Right. So when I got kicked out, I kind of I kind of felt and they kind of felt that I was a. Uh, you can say. Oh, yeah, no, you can't Ouch. say that, though. You know what I like about guys? And I, I, guys have this gene more than women. You're making a rap they're, all the time. They're like abrasive guys. <laughs> they try to call the show and they say, I got thrown out for no reason. Hey, I, what I got, happened? I got in a little argument with this chick and they <laughs> tossed me out of the military. You believe yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, you didn't lay a hand on it's her. It's always you like you making a rap. Threaten always her. Build I said one weird thing and next thing you know, I'm on a boat home. Stupid. Yeah, yeah. And then, then I got home. And I just showed up at home. And my, my parents, parents threw me, me out. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 And then I said the F word on Loveline, and Adam <laughs> threw me out. Yeah. Hey, John. Yeah. Please. Now, why did you, you... You went home, and your parents tossed you out just for coming home? <laughs> yeah. They just tossed you. You didn't get drunk. Did you ever have trouble with your, the law, or can uh, you join the no, forces? No, I, I was, I was, per, I mean, it was, I was a straight edge. When I was in high school. Strange. And you didn't get into it with your dad or your mom when you got well, home? Me and my dad have never really gotten along, hence why I left to go to the Air Force. So right. when I got kicked out, it kind of wasn't any better. In right. fact, it was worse. It was, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Right, but you didn't go home with your tail between your legs. Yeah. You, you and your dad got into it again, and then he yeah. kicked you out again. So I'm not like you, Dad. <laughs> Bless you. All right, so uh, now, John, you got you got to collect, uh, you got to get it together here. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I don't care about your relationships right now. That's not important. That is not the issue. What's, what's you important is get your right? life together, get yeah. a job, and get a place to live. Right, huh? right. Now well, here, yeah, I did get a job. I've been working forty hours a week, and I I go to I go to school as All well. Right. So I'm I'm trying to piece my life together slowly. Okay, right, well, get that not just piece together. Get it like solidly glued together and then you'll be available for a relationship well, yeah that's what i'm uh, concerns I, I when i stress out a lot because like i said i've been doing a 40-hour week and i i'm constantly working and i have school with that i i have a hard time releasing stress and i tried different methods and it just doesn't work and normally i've noticed when i have a relationship or i have someone close i could talk to like a girlfriend yeah it tends to help me yeah and the problem is i've been trying that and i'm not getting that all right well, you're not going to get it for a little while because you're 20 years old, and 20-year-old guys don't do real good with chicks. you got a crappy job. You're going to junior college. Your old man's booted you out of the house. you got tossed out of the service. You, you're, you're not a real attractive package at this point. That's all right. You work hard for a few years, and then you go out and get whatever you want. But that's what you got to do now. And as far as blowing off steam, you got to get like a heavy bag or a mountain bike or something. What, by the way, were the techniques you used to blow off steam before? Beating up enlisted personnel, stuff like that. <laughs> what was it? Um, I, I used to just hang out with friends. And after I got back, I, I, I used to actually do a couple things. I, I did something that my parents didn't know about when I was in high school. I did drugs. Oh. And I quit when I went in, and I... straight-edge guy in high school. straight-edge, yeah. And I've been a good job of not doing it after. Well, I thought you were straight-edge in high school. Well, I, I I didn't, like, get in trouble with the law, but I did some, yeah. <laughs> you did a fair amount of heroin, though? <laughs> no, none of that. All right. Well, straight-edge addict. John, please. Here's the problem. John has no problem with himself, yeah. right. but everyone, everyone else, else does. Problem. Yeah, and, and I love guys like this. Bus it's like, hey, well, wait, wait. well, I was straight edge in high school. No, I didn't do nothing. I mean, it's like <laughs> you never do anything. Why is there, Why does society punish you? Why, why did, singled him out. Why, they why, find why him. Why your old lady dump Bus you? Bus driver kick me off. Why does the colonel throw you out of the service? Yeah. Why, why does your old man have... Why does everyone have trouble if you don't do anything? Listen to me, everybody. Please, please. If people have trouble with you, it's because of you. It's not because of them. 
All this crap. I, I go nuts when I hear about people. Yeah, I got fired from my third job. What's right? Boss was jealous. I was doing the work of 10 men. Really? You were that good an employee? Yeah. Well, why did he cut you? No reason. No, no. <laughs> There's no reason. Yeah. Teacher. I had, ran that place. I, it, this it all begins in like junior high. I used to try to. I used to try to float this crap too, which is, I got the D because the teacher doesn't yeah. like me. Oh, of this guy's course. got it in for me. Mm. Yeah, just just drop it, everybody. Whatever it is you're doing, it ain't working. Man, whatever it is happening to you, it is you're doing. That's right. That and, makes and it happen. John, you stay in school, do your work. Fine. Hang out with your buddies. Don't get in any trouble. Get it together, and you can find a woman. But you know, women don't want you right now, and I don't blame them. Let's talk to uh, Jay, who's 30. Jay? Yeah, right here. What's up? Hey, um, well, first off, I want to say that, uh, you know, Adam Carolla, he rocks. You know, love Thank you. Show. Thank you. I love him, too. Love him, too. Big fan. Yeah, that's totally cool. Adam Carolla is just cool. And uh, Dr. Mm. Drew, yeah, he's kind of going on. He's all right, yeah. Um, you know, I've got to say that Jim Brewer, great comedian. Yeah, he's a nut shop lever, this Jim Brewer. Oh, not at all. All right, all right. Can't get any better than that. Anything anyway. about Norm MacDonald? Want to talk about him, too? <laughs> what, what, what's that? Anything yeah. about Norm MacDonald? <laughs> I don't know who Norm MacDonald is. Oh, he's going to really start drinking I'm even more <laughs> and gambling even more when I tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> he's well, going to start my... gambling on his drinking. <laughs> he's going to combine his two loves. <laughs> Jay? Well, my yeah. big question is, is uh, you know, I have this hair that's growing on the shaft of my penis. What on the it's shaft? Not... Hair that's yeah. growing? Yeah, on the shaft of my penis. Uh -huh. how, how far up? Um, up to the point where it's close to the head. It's not quite. It gets to that point where it gets, starts to get kind of pink, I guess you'd say. Yeesh. How much uh, hair? Well, not a whole lot. It's not as closely placed as it would be on your arms. Right, right, but it's uh, it's there. It's it's like definitely hair. Yeah, yeah. Not like it's not like, like a wild hair here and there. It's, it's in between it's, arm hair and uh, facial hair. Mm -hmm. I know. Like leg hair. Well, like what, what what has more, arm hair or facial hair? I gotta, I gotta no, in between. That's what I would say. Yeah, I know, but what what? Who, what has more? Yeah, your arm oh. or your face? Oh, the face, absolutely. Oh, okay. So it's more than arm hair, light, less than uh, facial hair. Yeah. That's that's hair, though. Yeah, I know. And I want to get rid of it permanently, but safely. And I want to know how to do that. Mm. What have you tried so far? I think acid, probably, is the way to go. Oh, no. No? no, no, no I'm no, not a doctor. I don't know. <laughs> what have you been doing so far? Um, plucking. <laughs> plucking one out. <laughs> Wait, you're... you're pl how can you pluck, I though, when you have... I going to say that. How can you pluck <laughs> your... I mean, if you had your arm, for instance, you couldn't pluck all the hair out of your arm. Well, you know, I tried it. I tried plucking, and it just didn't. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. Oh. Is, is this bogus, or is he not describing his problem? One or the other. Because he did downgrade to try. He said, he said how have you been get rid, getting rid of it so far? And he said, plucking. And then we said, plucking? You can pluck the arm on your hair. And he goes, well, I tried to pluck it. Backpedal. Which sounds like a little backpedal and mm -hmm. fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jay? Yeah. Now, I'm going bogus on this. No, no, not at all. Not at all whatsoever. I am worried about it myself. I've had no female say anything about it so far. All right. But I have... How, lar how large is your penis? Um, it's got a decent diameter. Um, well, sure, it's all covered with hair. Get an extra <laughs> seven-eighths out of that hair. No, I don't mean the hair. My head's bigger when I, don't, when I don't cut my hair. <laughs> Sounds like a... Businessman, you got good diameter, but the length, uh, the length. Um, I need new underwear because it doesn't go at the length there. It goes further than what I need to go when I get hard. So you gotta get new underwear. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I wish they would design something mm. where I. Can yeah, it. yeah, me too. And I wish they'd put my name on it. All yeah, right. And what about the what about the hair uh, as far as your boyfriend's <laughs> rectum goes? Is that uh, is that a problem? <laughs> <laughs> no, no boyfriend. No all right, boyfriend. all right. All right, hold on a second. I'm going all out poopy thing. What do you say? I can't. Uh, I can't figure out. Oh, uh, ass asshole like a mason jar. I'm, I think I'm going there. I I can't figure out. Yeah, but you know what? It's it's not crafted well enough to be a bogus call. Yeah, like he's too random. He's random. He's yeah. a little schizoid with his with his yeah. line. You know, I mean, he wouldn't see guy. He he wouldn't be making jokes about the underpants and stuff. Yeah. 
I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I guess, yeah. I mean, he literally is like, he could be a nervous a, a straight to answer. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Hey, Jay? Yeah. You're 30 years old, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Something, you sell cars, you sell something? Nah, I work in the laboratory. The lab? Yeah. What does what, that what mean? What kind of lab? It's uh, actually process wafers um, for a computer. For the church? Oh. <laughs> Did you say wafers? So you said wafers. I don't even know I mean, what a wafers, wafer man. is. For well, computers? computer wafers. Oh, computer wafer. What is a computer wafer? I don't know what computer is. All right. Anyway, Jay, you have a girlfriend? Yes. Okay. And she's all right with the penis? Yeah, so far, she has not said anything about it, but I don't want her when she's going down on me to say anything. Well, she's been, she's been down on you, yes? She's very recent, and yes, she right. has. Now, when she goes down on you, I'm picturing your glasses steaming up. <laughs> is this true? You wear glasses? Uh, no, I wear contacts and everything steams up. Uh-huh. All right. I knew it was a glass wear, though. Down at the lab, working on the wafers. Mm. Got a Sharpe for a penis. All right. So she's going... It's a mess. She's, she's going down on him. hair and his but, donkey. But, Drew, what about that? I don't know if they can do laser on that or not. I wouldn't think so. I, I don't think so either. What about, yeah. like, a depilatory? What? You know, like skin. Nair or yeah, something? Skin would not so so this it. happens a lot? You get there hair in the thing. donkey? There is such a thing. It yeah. happens. It's bad yeah. times when it does. Yeah, I mean, women don't like hair on your back. I couldn't imagine what they think of I hair think on your back. I think you'd have to, like, take a little shaver and, you know. Take a razor? Or, or a oh. clipper. <sighs> okay. All right, let's all just uh, thank God our dorks aren't covered with hair. Jim Brewer is our guest, and uh, we're going to take a little hey. break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Jim Brewer is our guest tonight. Jim uh, has himself a CD out called Smoke and Brew. It is going to be coming out, I should say, in a couple of days. And uh, you can find him at the uh, House of Blues on uh, September 25th out here in Los Angeles on uh, October 4th in uh, Anaheim and uh, on the 5th in uh, Vegas. Vegas. All right. I, I got back from Vegas yesterday. It's, yeah. uh, it's all right town. Yeah. It's coming together. It's <laughs> okay. You, you went there during the fight, were you? No. no that's where you're going to Tahoe then. Who yeah. fought? Yeah, there's always... Uh, there's always uh, De La Hoya, De La Hoya and Vargas. Somewhere. Yeah. There's always uh, something boring going on in Vegas when I'm there. It's like I go, boy, the town seems crowded. And I don't mind the town being crowded if there's stripper conventions in right. town. Yeah, the go-go's are but, but it's always like, yeah, it's a, I'm always, I always ask the cab drivers, what's going on? Oh, well, it was, it was crowded last week for the fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that sounds good. And what did I do? Oh, they got a convention for guys that do pottery or something. It's like 20,000 yeah. potters in here. Guys, you know, they, they sell the wheels. turkey and, convention. And it's always like, uh, that's what that's who I'm waiting behind. It's always a convention in that town. All right, let's uh, talk to Layla, who's 17. Layla? Yeah. What's up? Um, okay, I've been going out with my boyfriend for like a year now. Mm hmm. And I'm like really controlling and like compulsive about like what he's doing and where he is and like why he can't be with me if he's not with me. Uh huh. Yeah. And like, I mean, I. In the past, like, month, I've gotten a little better about it. Yeah. How long but, um, How long did you say you've been with him? A year. One year. My first boyfriend, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, it says up on the screen your dad died? Yeah. While on vacation? Yeah, he went on vacation. Where'd he go, Mexico? No, he went to um That's the number Iran. one vacation place to die. Oh, actually, Iran's number one, except for it's not no, normally thought of a, as a vacation destination. Well, like, we have family there. So. I see. What happened? He, I guess, had a heart attack. How old was he? 58. Well, they, they threatened to stone him, and he had a heart attack. <laughs> and, and so you were how old when that happened? Um, It was in the middle of my freshman year. Okay. 14? Mm -hmm. That's so definitely that's, not a good thing, but it doesn't... doesn't it's doesn't pretty have recent, to, though. Yeah. How are you doing with it? Well, at first, I was, like, fine. I mean, like, my mom was really, really upset, and, like, I, I guess I was kind of okay with it. And then she went to Iran to kind of, like, I get, he's, he's buried there. He, like, so I didn't get to see him or anything or have a funeral, but she went there. Why were you fine with it at the beginning? Well, because I, I thought 
that he, I thought maybe he was like alive somewhere else and that he was going to come back and that he was, I didn't think he was dead. That, that's not what you call fine, Layla. That's what you call in massive well, total that's denial. The reason I was fine, though, was because that's like how I was dealing with it. Oh, I see. Had he uh, had a history of faking his death? <laughs> my dad no, did No, but like, <laughs> I, I kept, until my mom came back with his stuff and I realized that, oh, he's dead. Oh, okay, so you you were just sort of in shock and in denial. Hmm. Yeah, I, right. yeah, I guess I was in denial. And, and now you've you've accepted it. Yeah. And you're, you're doing okay, but maybe it's affecting you and your relationships. I I guess. I mean, I can't really like figure out anything else. I mean, well, naturally I enough. Haven't, I haven't had many. I, I he's my first boyfriend. He's yeah. my first date. There's I mean. some people get in this this sort of. Uh, psychology or state where they can't even let someone leave the room. They, they have to be in complete control. They have to constantly see that they're okay. They have to constantly be reassured. They catastrophize when they're out of the room. In fact, like codependents do this very often with their addict alcoholic uh, partners. Right. And they try to control their disease and things. But this is uh, understandable well, given what you've been through. But here, So here's the thing, Layla. You're 17. You've not had a lot of experience dating. You, you suffered some trauma with your dad recently. And this is all par for the course. You understand what you're doing. Keep an eye on yourself. Keep yourself in check. You may feel like calling him and questioning him every five minutes. Just put the phone down. Behave as if you were sane. Behave as if you were sane. Then it'll be all right. You'll work it out. You're, you're fine. You okay, okay, baby? You can almost admit it to him, too. Yeah, it's sure. It's going to be a pain to him. Say, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just yeah. doing. Yeah, but you know the problem with that and women? And I think it would work on guys, but it doesn't work with women. Like when they tell you... They they chew they, they're all freaked out one day and they chew you out and they're mm -hmm. all over the place they're all emotional and then they tell you the next day <sighs> that time of the month I'm sorry baby you know the hormones go crazy I don't even know who I am and you're like okay and then next month they're like they start chewing on you and they start getting weird and they start whatever and you go uh huh you know baby this is that time of the month no that doesn't work nah, that, that makes it worse of that course it makes it worse it makes it worse and. What I'm, so what I'm saying is, is a guy can give this speech, and I think it'll work with a guy. Like, as a guy, don't you think you'd be all right with this? I mean, if you said to your woman, yeah, oh, absolutely. look, I'm, I, I get a little jealous sometimes, yeah. I get a little this, it just point it out to me. If I yes. start spinning out, I mean, as, right. as long as you're not loaded, I think you, it might work on you. <laughs> but absolutely. She probably would be loaded. All right, so just tell him you're okay, and let's move on. Dan? Hello? You're 22? Yes. Your girlfriend uh, scratched the hell out of you uh, when your pubes began to grow back? What? What's that say, Drew? Well, let's ask him what he tends to uh, ask us. Well, basically, my girlfriend had shaved herself, you know? It was like one, it was actually probably the second time we have been together. It was the first time we were actually alone in her house. You, you know? mean she saved her, shaved herself clean? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey. And, well, actually, uh, she had just started to grow back. I guess she did a little bit earlier in the day. It was late in the evening. Sure. She started to grow Five back. Five o'clock shadow. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, basically, she was riding me, you know, and we was the first time together. I mean, she looks good. I was having a good time, but oh, it was, sure. like, scratching me. It was kind of hurting a little bit. Right. But uh, I didn't do anything about it. You know, I was enjoying it. And Yeah. What would you have done about it, by the way? Well, well I'm not going to tell her to get off. So, but right. anyways, uh, it started hurting real bad. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, I like the question of what would you have done about it. <laughs> and he told you what he wasn't going to do. I'll tell you what I ain't going to do. <laughs> Well, are you some kind of fag, Drew? He's not going to tell her to get off. Hey, Dan. Yes, sir. All right, buddy. So oh. she's on top, and you're getting a little scratched up down there, but it's worth it. Um, so the next morning I woke up, and it was all red down there and really sore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, okay, whatever, it'll go away. And then the next day, I was actually at work, and I sat down to use the bathroom, and I looked down, and there was word that it was sore. There was white bumps, like, all over my upper thighs, my groin, not around, you know. Yeah. But ingrown hairs, maybe? That's what uh, someone else had said that had answered the call, but it, it wasn't ingrown hairs. It was from her, and it was really sore, and it, it, it freaked me out. So I just got out of the military, so I called my boss, hey, I got to go to the VA right now, man. Something's not right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this checked out. Mm -hmm. And I went down there, and I talked to them. They said, it's not an STD or anything, something about bacteria. Yeah. Got into the hair follicle. Right. It's like a folliculitis. Exactly. All right. And uh, so they gave me some antibiotics, right. and uh, it eventually went away. Right. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that, you know, this was probably, you know, eight months ago. We're still together. And uh, every once in a while, like a big old, uh, in the same area, it'll come back, like a big, and it'll be really sore. Like, it feel like a pimple almost, but, you know, I've, I've, I'll be, I try to pop them, but they're not like pimples, you like know? Like a yeah. heat blister? Yeah, what is that, Drew? I'm not sure. Carbuncles? 
is uh, and it. this is on your thigh. Yeah, upper upper groin area. It doesn't have much. To, it's, she's not giving it to you. That stuff grows on your skin. Has she? So it, not an STD. No. Has she grown underwear? Has she grown back since? Um, she pretty much stays shaved. I see. Yeah, you like that, huh? Well, she likes it. She I, likes I, I, don't, I don't really ask her to, but yeah. yeah all right, hey, whatever. Yeah. Uh, case of restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So the the term you bandy about a lot in the military? I'm guessing you do. Yeah. Name boats, case around, around planes and tanks and stuff like <laughs> that. Bombs. Be a good name for a boat. <laughs> or a bomb. <laughs> Door yeah. steak at Christen it. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, Dan. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell Drew to tell you what to do. Go, Drew. You get some Pfizer Hex scrub. There's antibacterial creams you can use. This is due to an overgrowth of staph or strep on your skin. Usually it's a staph. Gets into the follicle. You irritate the follicle from the way she's rubbing on you. And you'll have to take antibiotics periodically. That will happen. There's another cream called Bactroban that sometimes can... You, know, you, you just, talk to your doctor about you, that. They'll apply the, on there. You, you go to the skin section. You go to the zit section of the store. You get Pfizer Hex scrub. See if you can get that. It's these antibacterial scrubs. Not, not the anti... No, no, not the acne type scrubs. Well, well, but isn't that in the same section, it like when be. you go to the yeah, supermarket? Yeah, probably. It might be. I don't know. You, I don't know. And what do they use the Pfizer X? I thought they use that for skin, for yeah, like uh, yeah. acne. Y no, 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 no. All right. You just uh, you just being combative or no? No, it's not. It's irritant, so it's not that good for acne. You got to walk That's around good. big baggy shorts. Yeah, air is good. Keep it dry. Yeah, keep it dry. Keep All it right. dry, Hammer. All right. We're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. Jim Burr's here. A couple questions for him. We also uh, got Gene, who's 41's ex-con, divorced, joint custody. How to be sure his kids turn out okay? Mm. Well, they they got to do better than him, right? I mean, <laughs> that's, Drew, that's, that's, that's the problem. Your kids aren't going to do better than you. So that, that's got to suck. Like, I, <laughs> it's I, a lot of pressure. I started kids. cleaning carpets when I was 19. I was doing better than my dad <laughs> immediately. It, it was so easy. I graduated <laughs> high school. I was doing tremendous. better than him. I got, I got a C. I was doing better than him <laughs> in English. It, it was all, it's all gravy with the Corollas. You get, you get your own car, you're doing better than anyone in the family. Or you get a moped, you're doing better. Bank you, account? I don't have bank account. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. But the Drew man, forget Not it. the Drew man. Kids are screwed. And think about this. That's I don't know. Anderson and wants us to go to break. But I have an enjoyable life because I grew up in a crappy house and a crampy room with crampy parents and crampy everything. Everything sucked. Everything sucked. The car sucked. The parents sucked. The house sucked. The TV sucked. The toaster sucked. Every goddamn thing in that house sucked. They didn't have a goddamn dryer in the house. That place sucked so bad. I had a washing machine in my room and a, the meter was in my room. The meter man used to have to come in and read my meter in the room and I had the, the, the water heater and everything sucked. Now I'm happy. Oh, look at me. I'm elated. I got a great house. I got a great car. Everything's great. Your kids. Big step backwards. Yeah, no matter what. They got that big house up in the hills in Pasadena. You got the <laughs> you money. You got the BMWs. Car. They're going to be driving around a Daihatsu charade <laughs> and living in some flop house down on Skid Row. It's going to be horrible. Put radio speakers That's in the back right. of their car. Just a drinking uh, aqua animals, velvet, trying man. to get a buzz. <laughs> Old man beating on him with a chain. Doing whippets. Oh, yeah. Maybe I don't want to be a doctor. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, it's Maybe gonna be I Disaster. Disaster. <laughs> Disaster. Yeah. All right. We'll be back. Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jim Brewer is our guest tonight. Smoking Brew is the name of the CD, which is out in uh, just a couple of days. And uh, also you can find him at the uh, L.A. House of Blues and uh, then the Anaheim House of Blues and then the Vegas House of Blues. Uh, all coming up uh, September 25th, 4th and uh, 5th. And that's uh, October the 4th and the 5th, obviously. All right. Let's uh, hop back the phones and uh, burn a few calls here. Gene? Hi, guys. 41. What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, first of all, you know, in the short time I've been listening to you guys, I've gained a tremendous amount of respect. Uh, I think you're great. Uh, Drew, my question is, is that, uh, you know, I, I, I did some time about, uh, I've been out for four years now. Uh, my daughter's 13. My boy's nine. They're they're doing really well. We got a good relationship. Uh, but, you know, it seems like when I listen to these young kids call you with their problems, it all most of the time seems to stem back to something their parents did. And, always. And no, not most of the time. Always. Well, 95% of the time. Once in a while. It's, yeah. And, it's a little, you know, uh, 
I, mean, I, I carry around a lot of guilt. I'm the first one to admit I have not been the perfect parent, be, you know, because of, uh, you know, my crime and what I did. I'm I'm on the right path as far as... Well, what'd you do? And, and don't beat yourself up. Being incarcerated is not a bad dad. Well, what I did was I was uh, caught with a large possession of methamphetamine. And, I see. And did a three-year sentence. I'm, you know, on the... Four years out, my last year of parole, and it's all going great. And all right. You're working and everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Been, uh, you know, started out on the floor and back into management and doing well and all, all that. All right. All right. And, you you know, your your kids, now, were you doing a lot of meth when you were dealing? Oh, yeah. Right. That, 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 so that's, that all stemmed from my usage. Right. Of course. All right. Yeah. And that probably affected your relationship with your kids. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, you know, I... I, I was around and I was there for them, but you know. You right. Know. But now, how do how do how do they feel about you? Uh, well, I think they feel great about me. Um, at the time this all went down, of course they were a lot younger. My boy, I don't even know if he remembers any of it for that matter. But I I do talk about it regularly with my daughter. You know, she's in junior high and starting to get exposed to those type of things. And right. So I try to be up front with her as much as possible, which is another question. Is is that okay to do as far as my own experience? Yeah, when you've been, you should, generally parents should not discuss their drug use with their kids uh, unless you've been an addict or in, or in recovery and they need to participate in your recovery. Then it's, you know, talk in terms of the consequences and the fact that they are too at risk given the fact that they may carry the gene that you have. All right, but let, let's uh, reassure a gene in the sense that y you can't take back the past. That is what it is. So he has to say, because someone else would, well, you know, you duds are... So he shouldn't be honest with, like, his kid to tell him he did no. something like that? Or? Well, I, I think the 13-year-old no, is aware of yeah, I said he, uh, what happened. I'm not saying lie to your kids ever. I'm saying that most don't tell people, them the truth. Most ever, people, you right? just don't address it. You just, you know, you, you, it's not, right. Not that's your one, one aspect I haven't addressed with my daughter is: does she feel ashamed of it? Uh, if well, here's the deal: get her, to, get her to Alatine. That's it. Get her. This she needs treatment to process the implicit memories of having been through all this stuff. And there are ways you can either get professional assistance or a, a, a free way to do it is go to Alatine. Yeah. Uh, you make up some story about being in uh, some sort of Vietnamese uh, prison camp or something for four years. It's like, you, you see the movie Rambo? Uh, it's loosely based on, loosely, <laughs> loosely based on my experiences. And, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, te the teardrop tattoo, that's uh, Viet Cong. They, uh, they gave me That means you've been in country. Yeah, listen, I, I don't worry so much about the genes of the world. I mean, I... I do understand whatever they did in the past affected their kids, but he's very anxious on making things right yeah. with his yeah, kids. Yeah, he sounds excited. And, and that's life. that's fine. Yeah. I mean, they'll be okay. They're not going to be perfect, but you're here now. You don't have to compensate for the past. Just you know what I mean? I think yeah. that'll screw the kids up. Just be good from this day forth. Mm. Uh, I mean, mm. do, do you want No, I mean, get them the help they need, but I mean don't overdo it right. for not being around. Right, right, That's, right. You don't put the pressure on them. Right, don't then make them now responsible for your guilt, too. Right, right, just... So feed off that. Be be as good a parent as you can be from right. this day forth. Right, right. All right, question for Jim. Chris? Hey. What's up? I, I was just going to ask Jim um, how much he likes guitar, like, what are his favorite guitar players? <laughs> you like, uh, you, I mean, you like rock, right? I, yeah. yeah, I grew up... 80s metalhead. I was had the you're cross from New, you're earring. From New Jersey, Long Island. Oh, Long Island. Yeah, had the cross earring, the Worst. mullet, Judas yeah. Priest painted on the back. You like Van Halen. I liked Van Halen, but yeah. to me it was Judas Priest. Glenn oh. Tipton stuck his little pinky out when he played. He got enough. Yeah, that's hardcore. I was in a. I was giving blood the other day, and I was yes. looking around the room, going, "Why does it look so familiar? So familiar? Wait a minute. Oh my God! I was at a high school auditorium. Oh my God! On that stage." Is at a prom here in 1973, Van Halen. On wow, stage. that's right. They were a local band then in Pasadena. Yeah, playing at, uh, and uh, who else? Scotty Snotty and the Hankies. <laughs> Snotty Scotty. And who else who, who else played it? Uh, Blues Image? Was Blues that? Image. You know, you know Blues Image? No, it's Blues Rod. Image. You're in Captain Rod, Rod oh! upon your mystery <laughs> ship. Huh? Our our 13-year-old our listeners don't know Blue's image. I refuse <laughs> to believe that. Don't give me that crap. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> DJ. Yeah? You know Blue's image, right, Brada? Uh, no, man. I'm all right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, that's one guy. That's one guy. Ray, you're 14? Yeah. 
you're pretty heavily influenced by Blue's Image? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know Blue's Image. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, name a song they sing. Uh, Rod, Captain Rod. Rod, that's oh, right. Yeah. That's right. There you go, Kid's Red. 14. <laughs> kid, was, kid was born 22 years after Blue's Image broke up. No, they reformed and then broke he's up. He's still on top. And then 22 years went by, and then Ray was born, but he still knows Ride Captain Ride. All right, let's, uh, let's ride into a commercial. What do you say? That's, uh, that's good radio. That's good radio. Yeah, before I got to drop trial. good radio. All right, everybody, that's the show. What do you know? Uh, I want to thank Jim Brewer for being in here. Is it Thursday night? Yeah. Is it Thursday? Yeah, yeah that's it. It's Thursday. Wow. All right. Hey, uh, Mighty Mighty Boston's coming in next week. And nice. uh, David Allen Greer amongst uh, others. Log. David's funny. Guy for a while. Guy for a while. I didn't see that. Come on. He's Joe. the lead of the Guy for a while. You watch that show? No one knows it. Absolutely. Donald Logan. That is a very popular show right now. All right. You'll recognize him when he comes in. All right. All right. Don't tell him I said this. Uh, and Anderson, don't play this for me. It's already recorded, man. Idiot. <laughs> Idiots. All right. All right. Take a look. Now we got to go out on that note. That's the note? <laughs> Well, let's do a retake on that. Uh, All right. Donald Jim Brewer. Uh, Donald Love. Oh, hey, yeah. Big fan. Excellent. Big fan. Can't wait. I love Number that one show, isn't it? Number one show. Jim Brewer, it's everyone. Who's Jim Brewer? He's on Grounded for Life, goat too. Boy. Goat man. All right. Go, it's Goat Boy. Donkey guy. How dare you. Let's uh, take a little extendo break uh, Smoke and <laughs> Brew is the name of the CD. Thanks, Jim, for coming in. Thank you for having me. Nice to meet you. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo. Let's have some pork chops, some beer, and fish your wife. Who's in? <laughs> this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.